Hello everyone, praise the Lord. Today I'll be sharing the word of God on the topic, appointment with God. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we know that you are the counselor of truth, our help in need, and the one who fills us with the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, we pray this very day to come into greater communion, koinonia, with you. Please give us the spiritual wisdom and insight and flood our hearts with light. Help us to understand the incredible greatness of your Holy Spirit's power. For us who believe in you, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, help us to comprehend that this power is living and breathing in us and help us activate this power for your kingdom in the mighty name of jesus i pray amen amen and amen praise the lord i'd like to start this message with a powerful scripture reading jesus said in matthew chapter 4 verse 4 man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of mouth of god because god says my words are spirit and life in John chapter 6, 63. And it is a living and active, says Hebrew chapter 4, 12. And when it quickened by the Holy Spirit has dynamic power to impart spiritual life to us. In Old Testament Psalm, it says in 14 uh, verse two, the Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God, all have turned away all have become corrupt there is no one who does good not even one wow i believe one of the answer to our wandering heart is recognizing that we have a choice to acknowledge our needs for god it is a daily surrender to activate actively and uh, purposefully seek him one of the greatest mistake i believe we make as a believer uh, basing where they are in in their relationship with God on the how they feel I'm certainly guilty of this it is easy to get discouraged when you don't feel much anything after time spent with God you know it happens but I have learned that God is still working in our lives even when we don't see or feel it I have learned to take those times and press in even more perhaps god wants to know how faithful i will be regardless of how absent or silent he is there is very interesting chapter in the bible first kings chapter 19 if you read verse 11 to 13 what kind of a voice should we expect looking at the well-known old testament passage where the elijah hears god's voice on mount sinai as a still small voice a voice was not in the wind not in the earthquake not in the fire yahweh reveals himself in his gentle voice god was showing elijah that he is not always in the big mountain top experience but also in the silence you know hebrew chapter 11 verse 1 and verse 6 says now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen but without faith it is impossible to please God for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him see he wants us to want him as much as he wants us so set a time aside daily to spend in communion with, communion with God Greek word communion means koinonia k-o-i-n-o-n-i-a means communion with God how you can have a communion in God by reading the word of God to get to know him and being in prayer, get a small a group or a Bible study, find a mentor. Being in the word will change you from inside out and it will show in a due time. Know that the God of your father and to serve him, serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. In the New Testament, when Pharisees and Sadducees, they were gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great, greatest, great commandment in the law? You know, Matthew chapter 22, 37, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul and with all your mind. Jeremiah 29, 12, 13 says, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and, and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. But in Chronicle, Second Chronicle 15, 2 says, If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. So how you will know uh, the God, the more time we spend with him, the more we get to know him. Like any relationship in your life, you, you know people through, you know, interacting with them. The same goes for God as we draw near to Him, He, near, he draw near to us. Proverbs chapter 3, 6 says, In everything you do, put God first and He will direct you and crown your efforts with success. You know, firsts are important to God. Remember, in the first commandment, God said, You shall have no other God before me. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 means commandment means don't spend more time on anything than God. God is more important than A, B, C, any other things. Clearly, he wants to be ahead of everything else in your life. He wants to put him before your church, your job, your money, your things, your spouse, your children. He wants to be your number one priority. Not putting God first is like a, you know, buttoning your coat incorrectly. If you get the first button wrong, all other will be wrong. Hena? The good news is when you get the first button right, all other will line up too. Hena? As you put God first, everything else in your life will begin to line up as well. How? By only first spending time with God. You know, in Old Testament, King David uh, says to his, uh, he tells his son Solomon that God chose him to build God's temple, his sanctuary, house for the sanctuary. The first chronicle, 20, chapter 28, verse 8 to 9, if you read, it says, be careful to seek out all the commandments of the Lord, your God, that you may possess this good land and leave it as an inheritance for your children after you forever. There's amazing scripture in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 33. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For all these things the uh, Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you jesus isn't saying that it is uh, it is wrong to work for food or shelter clothing he just wants us to keep our priority straight he wants our hearts to be set on the spiritual eternal rather than the physical temporary you know our spiritual brain should be greater than the physical thing when we put his kingdom and eternal things first, God assures us that we will have the other things we need. When we have hundred other things you know, demanding our attention every day, our children have school, they're busy with their own things, you know, and we make time for friends, we make time for family, especially mothers are stretched in many ways, you know, the, doing the housework, family, we make sure everything is perfect, yet, our biggest priority, the one on the top who is sitting on the throne should be spending time with God. Should it be the last thing we remember to do? But it happens, doesn't it? I want you to understand why we should be praying first before we start our day. Everything we have come from God, you know? He created the heavens and the earth. He made us. He breathed life into our, in, in, into our lungs. He gave each of us time, treasure and talent to use while living on earth. And he will bless whatever we dedicate to him. 
Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, 6, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I personally can tell how my behavior changes if I don't take the time to connect with him. Feel anxious and have negative, you know, things, thoughts. And however, when I take time to pray and read the Bible, you know, something happens within you and you're reminded of his goodness. And the fact that I don't need to worry about my own situation because of that, you know, positive, you're feeling the positive things in your spirit. And I have learned some of the reason why God calls us to spend time with Him in the morning. You know why? These divine appointments set the tone for the rest of our day. You know, He's been given His people in the Bible early morning wake up call since the beginning. In the Bible, when the important decisions were to be made or essential activities needed to be accomplished, in, in the Bible. Bible shows us that God's people rose early to get their business done. Genesis chapter 22 verse 3 says, so Abraham rose early in the morning. Abraham rose early to carry out God's plan. Genesis chapter 28 18 says, early the next morning Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. Jacob marked and placed he called the gate of heaven from the dream he had that night before. Even extra chapter 24 4 says Moses then wrote down everything that Lord had said. He got up early in the morning next morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up 12 stone pillars representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Moses got up early to do what God told him to do the night before. You know, Psalmist says in 5.3, In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. Psalm 34.1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. David gave God his first thoughts of the day. Jesus also models early morning rising numerous times in the New Testament. Part of Jesus' focus, power and the wisdom come from spending time with his Father as the first thing in the day. Jesus said, you know, uh, uh, for the first point one to eight in John chapter 6, 35, he said, I'm the bread of life. He claims I'm the bread of life. And he says, 8, 12, I'm the light of the world. John 10, 7, I'm the door for the sheep. And John 10, 11 said, I am the shepherd. And in, in 11, 25, 26 says, I'm the resurrection and the life. And he says in uh, John chapter 14, 6, I'm the way, then the truth and the life. And uh, 15, 5, he said, I'm the wine, you know. And uh, John chapter 37, 39, he said, I'm the life-giving water. So, and when we consume all these things, one to eight points every day, because what we take in daily affects our lifestyle. Our spiritual, uh, spiritually, we become more stronger. It's easy to consume ourselves with other things, whether those things are sleep or internet or any worldly things. But when it comes uh, prayer, comes to prayer, we say, I will do it later. But it just, it, it just doesn't happen. When we spend time with God, we are choosing to say that He is more important in our lives than the other things that can become our idols if we are not careful. I know it sounds backward, but uh, if we put God first, the rest of our priority will easily fall into place. Amen. If we allow God to be the first person we talk to, when we wake up, a constant companion to our hearts and mind throughout the day, then the last person we say good night to. He is the first and he is the last. Revelation 22, 13 says, you know, before we sleep, Thank him for the for the protection that he gave throughout the day to you and your family. Ask for the forgiveness 
for the for the wrong doing thank you for the loving loving us even when we disobey or try to do things our way thank you for your protection over your family of your children thank you for the house thank you for the shelter thank you for the sleep thank you for the bed thank you for everything sami says in 145 verse 2 every day i will bless you and i will praise your name forever and ever so put god first and thanking him for everything in your life we can truly experience daily peace and joy when we do that philippian chapter 4 6 says do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with the thanksgiving let your request be made known to god wow psalm is says in 110 uh, 110 chapter and 165 verse great peace have those who love your lord nothing can make them stumble wow second corinthians 13 verse 14 says may the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship communion koinonia of the holy spirit be with you that is the communion of the holy spirit the fellowship of the spirit what we call koinonia must be at work in the life of anyone to do business with god it is important to fill with his presence matthew chapter 5 verse 13 to 16 jesus tells us to be the salt and the light of the earth He said you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot you are the light of the world god the scripture says a town built on a hill cannot be hidden neither do people light the lamp and put it under the under a bowl instead they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way let your light shine before others scripture says that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven amazing scripture what you do that reflects god it can only happen by spending time with the lord private prayer is rewarded colossian chapter 4 Uh, chapter 4 verse 12 says and Matthew chapter 6 6 when you pray go into your room close the door and pray to your father who is unseen then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you everyone needs a place to be alone with god see if you don't have a you know private prayer place then you will not be able to maintain a life that is filled with power so a life where it's evident that god is in us and he works through us because god resides within you john chapter 14 20 says on that day you will realize that i am in my father and you are in me and i am in you jesus says and 1 corinthians 6 19 to 20 says do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the holy spirit who is in you who you have received uh, from god luke 17:21 says for the for the kingdom of god is already among you within you you are the power point you are the magnet when only when you recharge through the power of the holy spirit for example see mobile phone I want to give you an example of mobile. Mobile phone with the small gadget, we can do so many things. We can Google, we can research, we can talk to people. Most of our life depend on uh, mobile phone, isn't it? So most uh, our life revolve with this small gadget. So but only when it is fully charged, right? When this phone is not connected to the power source, it is worthless. You know? Let me ask you this question. how how often do you charge your mobile all the time we make sure our mobile is fully charged all the time right after you charge you also carry a power bank if you're going out somewhere you carry a power bank with your bank why in case your battery dies right that means at least you are charging every day throughout the day because you know if you don't charge you will not be able to make it through the day connecting with 
everything else whatever you work you're doing if you have not plugged into the source you can't do anything you know and you get worried same way your life and my life is like this mobile phone that if you don't daily connect with the power source that is god the things that we do in our life are useless and the crazy thing about it the most of us with our prayer lives especially as a young people we pray whenever we need something for example for exam or if you want to certain job we pray and sometimes we also if there is a serious situation something happens you know life and death situation we remember god why we remember god because in the corner of our heart we know we believe we have that faith god can answer our prayer and he can do all wrong things right you know why can't we remember him every day see of course there there are still uh, challenges and things can still go wrong when you do pray in the morning but the difference is after you start your day with your prayer you will find that you are able to take things on with peace beyond human understanding you know philippian chapter 4 7 says the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus wow so you know there is a grace that is upon you you are able to handle things with confidence knowing that you have a god who works through you in you and for you god lord knows what we will face each day before we even open our eyes why not take a few moments to ask him what his plan is why not take a few moment to ask for direction why not take a few moment to simply ask for protection you know psalm 119 in a 147 says uh, i rise before dawn as a psalmist says i rise before dawn and cry for help i have put my hope in your word wow to be honest if we don't have a routine or a discipline of prayer we are spiritually empty like an empty bottle ephesians chapter 5 18 says be filled with the holy spirit acts chapter 4 31 the scripture says when jesus disciples when they were when they when they had prayed the place where they had gathered together was shaken and they were filled with the holy spirit and began to speak the word of god with boldness Acts chapter 13 52 says the disciples were continually filled with joy and with the holy spirit peter performed many miracles in acts chapter acts chapter 4 13 says when people saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived uh, perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men and they marveled and they realized that they had been with jesus in you know, a jewish leaders were astonished by the boldness of peter and john they weren't impressed with the with their background they realized they had been with jesus but how did they know it was it wasn't uh, in their education uh, like they're not educated they had no formal religious training it was in the spirit filled boldness that was born out of knowing jesus Christ. Acts chapter if you read the chapter there's a man who you know was born lame he was being carried to the gate of the temple and the gate name called beautiful every day he would beg gift for his need and the scripture says seeing Peter and John about to go in uh, enter they about to enter the gate he asked them for a gift and Peter and John looked at that beggar a uh, beggar and said uh, Peter told that man that beggar look at us he gave them a look thinking the expecting something to receive from uh, john and peter and uh, peter said uh, i don't have anything i don't have a silver and gold but i do have something to give you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk peter took him by the right hand and raised him up immediately his feet the scripture says and the ankles were given strength and he leaped up stood and began to walk amen some scripture in acts chapter 5:15 peter's shadow 
said Peter Shar people were healed at that time you know but there is no indication that peter shallow was the cause uh, in fact the verse specific uh, specifies that all were healed even those who were not under the peter shallow it was the annoying thing which they had it was pouring out of them people wanted to believe there was something special about peter and they began uh, began seeking you know uh, proximity uh, to to him in hope of having some power pass over them how this happened because they were filled with the holy spirit wow this can happen when you have communion with the god what i'm telling you is that you your life and uh, and the connection to god is through prayer jesus the son of god John 3:16 a amazing famous scripture God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life John chapter 1 was 1 to 4 said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and word was God he was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made in him was life and the life was in the light of men jesus is the word because through him all things are, are made that the uh, what he said to become apostle john's purpose is to establish that fact that jesus is god and man in one person by presenting jesus christ as the word through which all things were created he says john is saying that god chose jesus as his messenger messiah to tell us about himself about god himself jesus is god and the revealer of god the father mary conceived supernaturally jesus was conceived and born by his mother mary through the power of the holy spirit amen though he was a son of god yet The Bible says in Mark 1:35 very early in the morning while it was still dark Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed Jesus began the uh, being a son of God knew the value and power of private prayer in the morning amen in fact he's uh, he's he knew the value of being alone with god his father he became example for us to show how we have to live on earth through the power of the holy spirit amen we natural human being can live in supernatural naturally supernatural he didn't say i am the son of god i came from heaven and i don't need to pray i am going to relax no Bible say Jesus spent time and hours in prayer then he would heal the sick raise the dead deliver the demon possessed Matthew chapter 14:23 after his teaching Jesus sent the crowd away then the scripture says he went up on the mountain by himself to pray and when it was evening he was there alone Mark 6:46 says he left for the mountain to pray Luke chapter 9 18 says he was praying alone. Matthew chapter 26 39, Mark chapter 14 32. Jesus came with the disciple to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciple, "Sit here until I have I've prayed." He sent he spent time with his father. Mark 1:35 says in the early in early morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up left the house and went away to the secluded and was praying there jesus models for us here several important element of a morning devotion time with god you know number one you need a certain time okay according to scripture all this old testament how jesus jesus had a time in in the early morning while it was still dark those words in the early morning while it was still dark between 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. are important. This was the first thing Jesus did early early in the morning. It was the most important thing he did because everything else he would do later in the day would be determined by this. As we read 
earlier in the passage, you know, Jesus had been ministering to people at Simon's house until very late. The night before, people were, you know, crowding in. Everyone probably assumed that he would, you know, continue uh, this uh, successful ministry there. But as we read here, he didn't. After his disciple found him, Jesus said, as he said, uh, said in 38, let us go somewhere else to the town nearby so that I can preach there also. For that is why, that's why I came for. Jesus did not do what everybody thought he would do. After he spent time with his father, he got the specific direction that they were to move on instead. This is the one of the reasons why we need to spend time with God. First thing in the day. Proverbs chapter 3, 5, 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Because our time with God will change everything else we do that day. People say, well, I spend time with God before I go to bed. Well, that is good. We can and should spend time with God all through the day. If Jesus made the effort to get up and pray while it was still morning, how much more important for you, he's being God, got up in the morning and prayed, how much more important for you and me. Psalm 119164 says, I will praise you seven times a day, Psalmist says. First Thessalonians 5 says, we are to pray without ceasing. So pray and spend time with God all through the day. That's good. But make sure that whatever else you do, you spend time with God first thing in the morning because it will impact everything else you do in that day. You know, Ephesians chapter, uh, Apostle Paul says, we are in a spiritual battle every day. Our struggle is not against the flesh and blood. We are to put on the spiritual armor of God and pray. When do we put your, uh, when, when do you put your spiritual armor on? Before you go to a battle or after? Before, right? So we need to spend time with God before we go into the battle of the day. To put our armor on for the day, to pray for the people we love who will be facing the battles of the day and to get God's leadership and direction and power for the day. David says in uh, uh, Psalm 5.3, In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you. It was David's commitment that God would hear his voice every morning. And, and it needs to be our commitment too. Give God first place in your life every day by giving him the very first part of your day. For most of us, that means we need to set a time to get up. His example is important for every believer. God is the source of everything we need. Like, uh, you know, like, like I explained to you, like the mobile phone, we need to be charged all the time because we have no power or strength on our own. That's why we need to spend time with God every day. No matter what time you get up, you still give Him the first minute of your day. Amen? If you have to be at work at a certain time, you set your alarm for it. Once a day starts, we get caught up in so many things and pulled in so many directions. Life is busy and this world is noisy and filled with negative. I heard one story who was very faithful in his uh, first week of, uh, I think maybe Bible class or something. Every week he would uh, share about an experience of word of God and, and how he was spending the time with God every day. And, uh, but uh, then all of a sudden he told his friend, one week, he, uh, you know, uh, one week he, uh, he said, uh, I do it and I had a terrible week. I didn't even read anything at all, whole week. So his friend was really shocked. He said he was do, he's been he was doing so well, you know. He was so interested in reading the word of God and everything. And he and he asked his friend why, what happened, and and he said said uh, that friend said, see, I I work hard every day and I have to be out early to work. So I know if I am. 
going to spend time with God, I have to, you know, set uh, my alarm for five every day to get that in. And I have been doing it, as you know. And he said, but last week I was on vacation, so I didn't set my alarm. And he said, I thought I'll just have it when I wake up, but uh, then I slept in late and I thought, well, I have it after breakfast and then uh, he would go out and uh, do something, you know, out shopping with his family or whatever for the particular day. And I'll, then he, after he come back, he said, I will read my Bible after lunch, but I was sleepy and took a nap and said, well, I'll read it before I go to bed. But then I kept falling asleep. And so I thought, well, I get, I'll get up tomorrow and do it. And it was like that day after day, every single day. See, when he had a certain time to set up, he was very good at spending time with God. But when he didn't, it was so easy to miss it. That's why we need a certain time. Set your alarm, make it your commitment to spend time with God first thing every day. To get his power and direction for the day, just like Jesus did. Just like Jesus did. Spending time with God keeps our focus on him and keep the focus off ourselves just as Jesus did early in the morning. That's when our spirit are fresh, our mind are free, and the body is rested. In the Bible says Jesus regularly demonstrated the importance of spending time on, alone with God, whether it was getting up early to start his day with prayer or going to his father in the midst of incredible stress and uncertainty. Luke chapter 5, 16 says, But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. Jesus believed in the importance of putting his father first. And if Jesus did it, so should we. I challenge you to find your time for private prayer because this life will drain you too much of you. Life will happen, situation will occur, and things come up that will drain your focus on God. Doing life out of your own power, out, uh, life out of your own power, simply won't work. We need God. We need the Holy Spirit. Psalmist says in 23, 5, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Acts chapter 2, 16 and Joel chapter 2, 28. You know, uh, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It says, and it shall come to pass at the last days. I think last days already here, my friend. The things are happening around the world. It's scripture says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Most important thing is how much time do you and me spend alone with him? That counts. And are we spending enough time with the word of God? Are we spending quiet time in prayer, praising him, acknowledging uh, first thing in the morning for example you can't keep your body fit just watching the YouTube exercise you know online we watch you have to exercise yourself to keep your body fit and don't right same way so get to know him for yourself take the time to read the scriptures and consider what God has for you everyone can take their relationship with God to a deeper level by reading the Bible. Bible is like a road map leading to the right direction. Think of it like a letter from God to you, explaining who He is and where you came from and who He's made you to be. You know, reading the Bible every day can change the rest of your days. Bible says in Joshua 1 8, this book of the law, this gospel of the law, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and, and then you will have a success, good success, that says. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you 
wherever you go. He promised you he will be there with you. Psalm 1, chapter 1, 1, 3 says, His delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth, uh, forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not weather. Whatever he does shall prosper. Amen. So when you meditate the word of God, you meditate the positive things. So there is no room for negative things. That's why scripture says meditate on the good part of your life. Better good things. Ne never bring your negative things in your mind. Next, take the time to be still and know that he is God. The scripture Psalm 46 10, the be still and know that I am God is the first part of Psalm 46 10. Here the word still come from the Hebrew word mean, meaning to let go or release. The meaning would be the you know, best understood to say, cause yourself to uh, become a restraint or a let go. The other words, we need to come to a place where we are willing to submit ourselves to God and acknowledging that He is a sovereign control. When you realize that uh, we are truly incapable of controlling life, we can, we can surrender our will to God's will. Amen. It may be a matter of finally saying we trust Him. This will open the door so that we may experience the fullness of all God wants, wants and has for us. After all, He is a creator and has a perfect plan for us when we let Him orchestrate it. Amen. Now, the, the book of Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and hope. Powerful scripture. So be still and know that I am God means to know that He is your God. Acknowledgement means answering God. The first, we must know that God is God the one and only supreme being who created all the heavens and the earth according to Genesis chapter 1 1 we can know him by having an intimate relationship with him how by spending time with him amen that does not come from knowing about him but rather getting to personally know him by what he says in his holy word the bible recognizing the things he does in our lives and by uh, by ways of his holy spirit who comes to guide and comfort us in john 14:26 says jesus says but the comforter which is the holy spirit who the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatever i have said unto you amen when we read the bible we will learn to recognize the way god talked to us the kind of things he says and the merciful love he offers because god is omniscient all knowing omnipresent universal presence at the same time omnipotent all powerful holy faithful and sovereign he's infinite without measure forever amen be honest with yourself are you praying like you should be question mark are you taking the time to recharge your faith because the bible says in hebrew 11 6 without faith it's impossible to please god do you have a place where you can pray without distractions a place that you can pray only a place where it's just you and your father your god your lord your creator prayer is not for show or to impress other people it is designed to help us to build a personal relationship with our creator it's like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with god you know we can express our deepest emotion and be open with God in a way we could not be in public. 
and also scripture says when your father you when you when you pray in privately your father he will reward you which is prayed in secret he will reward you openly amen by having a koinonia communion with god the father in the morning we are seeking lord out of all of our priorities saying lord you that you are the most important priority of my day you're saying that i will give you the first fruit of my day if you allow time for god first thing in the morning he will bring together the rest of your day amen make a commitment today to start your day with god amen make a commitment to start your day with prayer amen would you like to pray after me heavenly father today i choose to put you first i acknowledge that without you i can do nothing i invite you to have your way in my life as i seek you first in all that i do in jesus name thank you that you make all things new 2020 this year been tough whole world is going through bad time which have reminded all of us how much we need you i pray for your protection over my families and friends i ask for your hand to cover me and keep me distant and protected from the evil intent of the enemy that you would be a barrier to surround me that I'll be safe in your hands heavenly father forgive me for the time i have worked so hard to be self sufficient forget forgetting my need for you living independent of your spirit forgive me for not following your ways and for living distant from your presence i confess my need for you fresh new again revelation 21:5 says your word says father behold i will make all things new i ask that you make all things new in my heart in my mind in my life in my job in my finance for this coming days months and year in jesus name amen amen and amen bye for now until we meet next time god bless you and shalom